Welcome everybody to Forza Horizon 4 and today we're taking a look at the 1973 Mazda RX-3 now this is part of the Series 1 range of vehicles from our, of the RX-3 that was produced between 1971 and 1973 it was available as a sedan and station wagon but this coupe version was the more popular variant and uh, yeah this is notable for having a Wankel rotary engine uh, that we'll have a look at now so yeah it's 1.1 litres and uh, yeah it produces 110 horsepower and 100 pounds feet of torque, which I know doesn't sound all that much, but given the advantages which I'll go through of uh, having a Wankel rotor engine, it is a uh, well worth those advantages and the fact that it's got a fair decent amount of power. So uh, yeah, Wankel rotor engines are lighter due to having less moving parts, which also makes them simpler. It also has a, a smoother flow of power less vibrations and uh, revs higher while producing the same kind of power as a he equivalent heavier engine and to put that into kind of contact uh, to context a uh, similarly you know uh, sort of vehicle like the Chevrolet Vega GT which also is rear wheel drive also has a four speed uh, manual gearbox also has 110 horsepower and it's also similarly shaped to this has a 2.3 litre inline four engine and like I said, produces the exact same horsepower as this at 110 horsepower. Now granted that has 38 pounds feet of torque more than this, which obviously means it can deal with its weight better and uh, yeah, deal with hills or anything like that in a, uh, in a better way. But yeah, there's no doubt that this uh, engine has the uh, power advantage, because not only is it lighter, but it has the same amount of power. As uh, yeah, the car overall weighs 2,060 pounds, which is 170 pounds less than the Vega. And quite frankly, the Vega only has one thing over this car, and that is its hatchback design at the rear. Whereas this is unfortunately only like a you know a typical saloon, where the uh, the boot is like this. But the boot isn't small or anything. But yeah, the hatchback design on the Vega is definitely a more practical option. But everything else is practically the same. It's got the same kind of interior, same kind of space inside, and uh, yeah, got your typical white and black dials. It's even got a uh, rotary engine uh, decal in the middle there, which I actually quite like. And uh, yeah, it's all as you'd expect from an early 70s car. Not much in the way of technology, but everything there is that you'd expect on a car from that time is there. And uh, yeah, it does look nice and comfy, and uh, yeah, it has plenty of uh, light and air going for it as well. Rear seats are plenty spacious enough, and uh, yeah, it also looks fairly good as well. Not, maybe not quite as, uh, you know, as Japanese as you'd expect, it does quite look like an American car in a lot of ways, uh, but definitely looks better than the Vega, and uh, yeah, despite obviously sharing the same kind of shape as the Vega, but I do like its coupe shape, definitely is uh, the uh, more stylish of the three variants that you could have of this car, and uh, yeah, being a uh, more sporty version, let's get out onto the open road and see what this car can do. So yeah, being lighter and having the same power as a uh, Vega, it's actually slightly quicker to 60 than the uh, Vega, but the Vega does have this licked in terms of 0 to 100 time. But they both share the same top speed. But firstly, let's uh, li let you listen to the engine first, because that is the party piece of this car, and then we'll talk about it some more. So yeah, typical rotary engine noise there, revving up to more than 7,000 RPM, while the Vega, for instance, with its rather limp inline 4, doesn't even manage 6,000. So uh, yeah, definitely a sportier car than the Vega, despite the Vega being called a GT. And uh, yeah, also is a better sounding engine, looks better than the Vega, but like I said, in terms of 0 to 100 time, this is slower, as this can do 0 to 60 in 9.9 .9 seconds, whereas the Vega manages it in 11.219 seconds. Uh, where, uh, but this only manages 0 to 137 and a half seconds, whereas the Vega does it in 31.044, so uh, more than 6 seconds quicker than this to 100. And uh, yeah, but they both share the same top speed of 121 miles an hour. Now one problem with this is the fact that if you're not in the right gear at the right time you do have very limited amount of power whereas a Vega has a generally uh, you know even kind of torque curve 
but this below 5000 RPM in a uh, high gear does not really have all that much in the way of power. Most of the power in this car is at the top end, so uh, yeah, you do really have to work that 4 speed gearbox to really get the most out of this car. But if you're fine with a manual, then uh, yeah, you're going to have no issues with this whatsoever. And uh, yeah, at the end of the day, it does feel like a uh, more sporty and fun car to drive than any of its uh, contemporaries. Because the Vega, as quick as it is to 100, and uh, yeah, the fact it's got a uh, probably the uh, meteor feeling engine due to having all that torque, it's yeah, far weaker in terms of handling, rolls around a lot more than this does, whereas this doesn't really roll around all that much. And uh, yeah, due to it having that heavier, larger engine up front, this feels a lot nippier to turn, doesn't have quite the understeer. And with that engine noise, it definitely feels like you're going faster than you actually are. Which, considering they're basically the same uh, kind of in terms of acceleration between us and the Vega, because we have the 0 to 60 time, the Vega has the 0 to 100 time, but we have the same top speed, then this generally feels like a, a quicker car just because of how it sounds and how much better it is in terms of handling. So, uh, yeah, really glad to have this back in a Forza game. We've uh, obviously not been, uh, you know deprived of this car in previous Forza games, it was in Forza Motorsport 7 and I'm sure it's in several other Forza Motorsport games as well, but it is at least nice to have this in the game. We will also be having the uh, Mazda Cosmos in uh, a future uh, festival season as well, so look out for that because that is where the uh, where Mazda really uh, you know, made the Wankel rotary engine look like the kind of desirable kind of uh, engine that it is, uh, but then obviously they uh, put it in a more uh, you know, usable uh, vehicle like this to uh, really sell it. So, uh, yeah, you get this car by doing the 50% uh, on the current festival playlist, which is, you know, generally easy enough to do. And, uh, yeah, it's well worth getting if you're into your Japanese domestic cars. But this is also, uh, yeah, a cracking car in its own right and, uh, yeah, well worth trying out uh, if you uh, never s tried it before. But if you're obviously not interested in working for it on this festival playlist, then you can obviously get it a far easier way just by buying it on uh, Forza Motorsport 7 which, uh, yeah, means you can also try it out on a track because, uh, yeah, this car shines free roam or track, quite frankly because, uh, yeah, it's fun to drive around Britain but it's also fun to drive around on a track as well but nonetheless, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one Bye!